What really is different about nanotechnology is we move into a realm where the rules are different, uh, but where we now can control things, going from very small to very large. Nanotechnology may be able to solve critical questions that we are facing. Questions about environment, questions about energy resources, questions about global health. Usually when people talk about nanotechnology, they're usually talking about solid state components, often an idea that what you're building is an electronic device. But I think nanotechnology more broadly defined should also include biological elements. Soft things, squishy things, things that are not solid state, and then putting those two things together. And that's how very interesting nanoscale systems are being created. We are combining chemistry at the atomic scale with measurements that we do, which involve measuring current, measuring force, measuring you know, shining light. We can make molecules that are able to sense or switch or recognize. And so if we can incorporate those into devices, we can actually make materials that have the properties that are similar to what we've written into the molecules with through the synthetic chemistry. My lab is more work on this electronic property of the materials, uh, carbon-based nanomaterials, graphene, fluorine, nanotubes, that once you make the device out of nanoscale materials, you want to characterize their properties and how electron moves inside. We make little devices initially that can move in response to moisture. Just like you're breathing, these things are moving and they can push other objects. You connect it to a generator, then you create electricity from changes in moisture or evaporating water. From the biotech angle, what we're doing is we're providing new mechanisms for which they can do the kinds of things that they do on the biotech side of the world. Traditionally, they operate using optics, using fluorescence, using light, using photons. We can give them ways of doing things where they don't need light. They can do things directly electronically. When I say observe, I don't use my eyes to see. That You cannot see something like this with your eyes. You have to probe some property that you measure with an instrument and then you you deduce from that that you have a single molecule attached to you two electrodes. The existence of this nanoscale science and engineering center where we brought together physicists, chemists and engineers into a community has really totally changed how research is done here at Columbia. The biggest power source in nature is evaporation. So our climate is powered by evaporating water from the oceans and we have no way of accessing this energy. We can access wind power, but we cannot access evaporation. So this may be an opening for a completely new energy platform. The ability to make a fully functional electronic device from the bottom up using chemistry is something that, that we can dream about. and. The only way to get there is to know how things work and what works as a switch or how can you make a functional device at the nanometer scale. So you can imagine a world in which we'll be able to uh, uh, make sensors and, and switches and things that can operate anywhere in the world in sub-Saharan Africa and things like that. These are the, the kind of things that nanoscience and nanotechnology um, promises. The place where people are going to see it the soonest is going to be medicine because nanotechnology allows you to go in and, and you know with your own little hands, I mean not your hands but the nanotechnology's hands, go and do things on the scale of the nanometer scale which is where medical function is. Imagine the convergence of semiconductor technology and biotech. There is no company out there that has expertise in both of those areas. You have semiconductor companies and you have biotech companies. So it really takes a university to be able to figure out how to put those two pieces together and create new technologies that combine aspects of both. If you looked carefully, you would discover that today, Columbia is one of the key leaders in the university community in nanotechnology. And that really has come about because of this collaborative environment that has been created here.